I'm Laura Lee Siemens and welcome back to our Bible study. And we are going through the book of Daniel and we are on to Daniel chapter 7. So one of the things that you'll notice um, with Bible study with the book of Daniel is that a lot of times uh, people study Daniel all the way up to Daniel chapter 6, but then they don't want to go on after that into Daniel chapter 7. They can be a little bit afraid of that because it gets kind of crazy after Daniel chapter 7. Um, and actually, if you look uh, ahead to the last verse in Daniel chapter 7, we find out that Daniel was actually a little bit afraid because he says, My thoughts greatly troubled me and my countenance changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. So even Daniel was a little bit afraid. So we can give pastors a little bit of leeway um, if they're afraid to teach this uh, chapter or teach on after chapter 6 of Daniel. But God put it in here for a reason. He is telling us the future and he wants us to know what's going to happen. So if God put it in the Bible, it's because he wants us to know about it. So don't be afraid to study it. And we're going to jump in. And once we go over it, it's not actually that hard. Uh, so it starts off with, um, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon. Now right there, it's really important. We're going to stop right there because there are people who call themselves theologians um, who have said that Daniel was written, um, this part was not written by Daniel, it was written way in the future, and it's not prophecy, it was just history. So it's just the way that they were explaining what had happened, and then they just put it back here. So it's just a little life hack for you. Just because someone calls themselves a theologian doesn't mean that they know what they're talking about. Um, anyone can call themselves a theologian. A theologian is someone who studies the Bible. So there are people who are atheists who call themselves theologians because they study their Bible. And there are people who say that they are Christians, but they spend most of their time uh, going through the Bible and trying to um, change it or try to put doubt in the Bible. So just because someone says they're a theologian doesn't mean you need to trust what they have to say. But right here, God wrote, uh, God had Daniel write, in the first year of Belshazzar, so when was this taking place? This is the first year of Belshazzar, uh, when Belshazzar was king. Daniel had a dream. So this is Daniel's dream during the first year of Belshazzar. Now, you're probably thinking, wait a second. We left off Daniel was with King Darius or King Darius, depending on how you say it, with the Medes. The Medes and Persians were running it. So this was written way back um, before... Uh, Daniel chapter 6. So like, probably in between Daniel chapter 5 and chapter 6, that was when this would be written. And it would have been written about 40 years after Daniel chapter 2. So Daniel would have been in his 60s at this point. And he'd been serving in the government of Babylon for like 40 years, 40 plus years. But he didn't write it down until later. Um, and because it troubled him. So that is what we have that. So he has this dream, and as he's dreaming, there's four winds uh, of the come. So four winds of heaven. So winds come from all the directions, and they come to the great sea, and they stir up the sea. And out of that sea comes beasts. So the first beast that comes out is a lion with eagle's wings. So this lion with eagle's wings comes out, and then eagle's wings are ripped off the lion, and then he is given the heart of a man. Next beast that comes out is this bear. So you think this big, huge, bulky bear, and he's, like, and he's leaning on one side, so he's like bigger on one side than the other side, and he's got these ribs in his mouth. He's got these three ribs in his mouth. Then the next animal that comes out is a leopard, and the leopard has four heads and four wings. And so this animal comes out next. And then after that comes out another animal, and this animal, there is no animal it can be compared to. Um, so it's just described as a hideous, horrible beast. And actually it's called dreadful beast, terrible beast, exceedingly strong, horrifying beast. And this beast has teeth of iron and it has these 10 horns. So as Daniel is looking at this crazy beast and it has these 10 horns, there's this little horn, little tiny horn that grows up and then it takes three of the horns that are there and plucks them out. And then it's just this little horn and it grows and it's huge. And then this little horn, it has this eye that can see everything. So this is the ever present, ever seeing eye. It sees everything. And it has a mouth. And the mouth speaks uh, pompous words. So yeah, pompous words. We know what that is, right? He's arrogant and he thinks he knows everything. And he speaks out against God. 
So pompous words against God. Then after that, so we have these beasts. So remember we have lion with eagle's wings. Um, that's given a man's heart. We have the leopard with the four heads and the four wings. Oh, the bear first on one side with the ribs, then the leopard with the four heads and four wings, and then this hideous crazy beast with the horns and the little horn that speaks pompous words and can see everything. So after all that, um, Daniel is taken to this throne room. This section of Daniel chapter 7 is probably, I would say, like definitely actually, my favorite part of the entire Bible. And this is one of the reasons I get frustrated when preachers don't preach past Daniel chapter 6. Because what we are given here is a glimpse of the throne room of God. And that is absolutely amazing. In fact, um, I remember a couple of years ago, be about three and a half, four years ago now, that I went through a really hard time and there was, I was praying and there was this very, very specific prayer request that I was bringing to God that I needed answered. And I um, actually, I'm not someone who has had fasted and prayed before for long periods of time, but I actually fasted and prayed for an entire week. And while I was doing that, while I would pray, I would read over this section of Daniel before I prayed because this is the throne room of God. So when the Bible says you are allowed to go to the throne of God and bring your prayer requests, like then we can go back here in Daniel chapter seven and we can see what the throne room even looks like. Like it's absolutely amazing that thing that God is allowing us to have this glimpse. So it says here, I watched till the thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated. So the Ancient of Days is God, God the Father. So um, for the Trinity, we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So this is God the Father. He was seated, his garments was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool and his throne was a fiery flame. At, at its wheels were a burning fire and a fiery steam issued and came forth from before him. It's a little bit of a terrifying throne of God. When the Bible says that we should have the fear of God, like it literally means the fear of God, all right? Um, there's 10,000 thousands ministering to him, 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. So all around this throne, so there's this throne, uh, there's fire and there's steams of fire and then all around, is angels, an unnumberable amount is basically what it's saying there, amount of angels. And the court was seated and then the books are opened. And who is on trial in this court? It's the crazy hideous beast and specifically um, the horn. So he watched, I watched then because the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking, I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. And as for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and time. So the other beasts, so the um, lion and the bear and the leopard, their dominion is taken away from them, but not their lives. But this hideous beast, he is killed and thrown into the fire. And then what happens after that? Um, the angels worship him. But in comes one like the son of man. So remember all the way back, um, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fire, and then who was in the fire with them? One like the Son of Man was in the fire. So this is one like the Son of Man. It's the same terminology used again. He was coming from the clouds of heaven, and he came to the Ancient of Days. So this is one Son of Man who was able to come right to the throne of God. And he was given dominion and glory and all the kingdom, and all the people's nations and languages would serve him. So um, this is Jesus, and Jesus is given... Um, dominion over the whole world and all of the dominions will serve him and his dominion is an everlasting one and it will not pass away. So this is what Daniel sees. This is his vision. So as he's there, he's turned to someone standing next to him. Now who would be standing next to him? So he would it be another person. No, this would be an angel because remember there's an unnumberable amount of angels all around him. So he turns to the angel and he just basically says, what is happening? All right, so uh, he wants to know what is going on and what is all of this stuff about. So now I'm going to quickly explain to you what all of these things are. So this is why I said in Daniel chapter two, you really want to know Daniel chapter two because it, um, once you have that framework, then the rest of it kind of flows into place. So um, the lion with the eagle's wings represents Babylon and specifically King Nebuchadnezzar. 
which would have ha already happened when Daniel um, recorded this and had this vision because this was during the time of King um, Belshazzar. So the kingdom was still there, but then specifically King Nebuchadnezzar was gone. So King Nebuchadnezzar, remember, uh, he had, um, he was like an animal, but then he, like, he went crazy and he ended up in, living out in the wilderness. So that was like when he was humbled and then he was given a heart of a man. So that's kind of what is happening here. And it's a reminder of that. So that's Babylon. He's described beautiful king over everything, the most beautiful king. Um, eagle's wings, glorious, but then it's taken away from him, but then he's given a heart of a man. So that's Babylon. Next comes the Medes and Persians. The Medes and Persians are a bear. So what happened with the Medes and Persians? Now it's really important to, like when you're thinking about um, doing Bible study, it says the Medes and Persians, but then take time to go and look where that is today. So we're talking about Iran. So Persian is Iran. So this would have been Iran. Bear has three ribs in his mouth and the three ribs are Babylon, Lydia, and Egypt. And Lydia is um, part of Turkey today. So they took over Babylon, uh, part of Turkey, and Egypt. And that is the part that the Medes and Persians had conquered by the time their empire fell. So that is the three ribs in its mouth. So next comes the leopard with the four heads and the four wings. So think through our statue. So who is next? So we had Babylon, um, we had Medes and Persians, and then on the stomach we have Greece. So Greece is the next one that's coming. And he has four heads and he has four wings. And that's because um, the character, the king for Greece is Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, we're going to learn a lot more about him in Daniel chapter um, 8, which is coming up tomorrow. But Alexander the Great... Um, died really, really young, and it was kind of a surprise death. He died um, in Babylon in a castle of like a fever. Like basically the flu killed off Alexander the Great. And he had no sons, so he had no one to take over his kingdom. So instead, his kingdom was divided into four kingdoms and was given to four his four head um, generals. So... That became um, Macedonia, um, part of Egypt, Syria, and Thrace. So that's why it was divided. So that's why he has four heads and four wings. Also, he's a leopard, which is the fastest animal. And that's important to remember for when we do the next chapter. So he's super fast. And because um, he, he rose to power so quickly. He was really young and basically took the world by storm. And people were absolutely shocked. Uh, how quickly he took over the world. And even today, in school, we still learn about Alexander the Great because um, in history, he was like insane how fast he took over the world at such a young age. But we're gonna learn a lot more about him tomorrow. Okay, and then we have the crazy beast. So who comes after Greece if their statue is Rome? So the iron teeth are kind of a good representation of Rome because Rome um, brought in all that kind of stuff with the iron and with their war and how they fought and they were vicious. Um, but then he has the 10 horns and that's kind of like the toes in our statue. So here's the first time that we are introduced to, are you ready for this? The Antichrist. So the little horn is the Antichrist. And so that hasn't happened yet. So all everything else had been fulfilled up until this point with the 10 the 10 horns are there today, I believe, because we have the UN and we have um, the European Empire. And they are trying to have world dominance. So it's, they're there, but we, they don't have power yet. But we're kind of living in the time period in between um, the little horn coming to power. So the little horn has an ever-present eye. It can see everything. And it's going to take out three other horns. So there'll be like 10 kings that kind of are there to rule the world. And this little one's going to come up out of nowhere. People are going to be surprised because he wouldn't seem like somebody who would be uh, in charge of the world. But he's going to take out three of the other kings and then have dominance. And he will have that ever-present eye. So he will see all and there'll be no way for anyone to get away from him. And he will speak and he'll be very prideful and boastful. And he will be against God and God's people. But he will also be taken and killed and thrown into a pit of fire because um, Jesus will come and he will rule the world. So there is hope. Okay, 
So all of these things um, were explained. And then when they say here, they talk about um, this fourth beast as the angel is describing what's going to happen and explaining it. And he says that this kingdom will be different from all the other kingdoms because it's going to devour the whole earth and it will trample and it will break it down into pieces. And then it talks about the ten kings and the little ones that's going to subdue three of the kings and the pompous words. also says he's going to persecute the saints of the Most High. Now remember, this is written a long time before Jesus has come to earth, a long time before Christians are here. Um, but this is what they're talking about here is the Christians, that, um, the saints of the Most High, and also the Jewish people. So the time and a time and a half of a time um, is three and a half years is when he's going to have full control uh, and will, his dominion will be terrifying. We're going to learn a little bit more about that and the whole thing with the seven years and then three and the three and a half years. We're going to learn all about that in a couple of chapters, so don't worry about that right now. But know that he will have dominion for a short period of time. Um, but he will do a lot during that time. And then he will be destroyed. And then the kingdom of God will come and rule forever. So, see, it's not that big of a deal, right? This chapter is not that hard. It's not that complicated. So just a quick review before you go and read it. So you're going to have the beasts that are going to come out. We're going to have the lion. We're going to have the bear. We're going to have the leopard. We're going to have the horrible beast with the ten horns and the little horn. And then we're going to have God's throne and have the courtroom and the other kingdoms have their kingdom taken, their dominion taken away, but not their lives. But the beast is killed and thrown into the fire. And then Jesus comes and rules. Daniel says to the angel to sit beside him, what is happening? The um, angel describes to him and explains to him what's happening. And then Daniel is terrified. He wakes up from this dream and then he does write it down, but he doesn't speak to anybody about it for a long time because it was so scary. That's it. See, it's not that hard at all. So take some time to go and read Daniel chapter 7. And then tomorrow we're going to jump into Daniel chapter 8. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more detail about um, Alexander the Great and about some of the other things in Daniel chapter 7. But spend some time praying after this and think about the throne room of God and how blessed you are to be able to go to the Ancient of Days and speak to him. That is absolutely such a blessing and such a privilege. Uh, so, I'm Lurley Siemens, this is Daniel, chapter 7, you survived it, and tomorrow we'll do Daniel chapter 8.